Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Strident defense of government's handling of garbage and housing issues from MP Juliet Holness. More reports about road conditions and police clampdown. Government MP responds. And later in sports, Jamaica Premier League begins today. I'm Kalisha Williams and here are the details. It was a fiery Jamaica Labour Party Era Council 1 meeting on Sunday as MP for East Rural St. Andrew Juliet Holness underscored the legacy of the Andrew Holness-led administration. From housing and garbage collection to taking jabs at the opposition's people, opposition People's National Party. More in this report. <laughs> A grand entrance for a grand occasion. One of the first face-to-face -face JLP era council meetings in Kingston since COVID-19. The main speaker, MP for East Rural St. Andrew Juliet Holness, was adamant to make her mark when she took the microphone. Everywhere in my constituency that it is not safe to live, comrades live there. Anywhere where a river went to wash away, comrades live there. Anywhere that is a garbage dump, comrades live there. And it's not Labour Party put them there. I want people to start to look around. Life rough, yes, and some of us do have it hard. But start to look around and see who really care about you. That message comes at a time when the government has been criticized for demolishing illegal structures in Clifton, St. Catherine. And so Mrs. Holness urged Jamaicans to reflect on the history of housing solutions put forward by the PNP. The places they put people to live, they would never live for a minute. They don't even want to visit and walk through. So when I have people in my constituency and flood rivers come down, them with and their leader come and tell them don't move don't move stay right there i recall desmond mackenzie saying to me years ago i begged them to move i find place to put them and they refused to move as she compared and contrasted the events of the past, she did not leave out the perennial problem of garbage collection. An island-wide shortage of garbage trucks has seen uncollected garbage piling up in many communities in recent months. However, Mrs. Holness believes the Andrew Holness-led administration did not create that problem, but rather found the solution. Since then, the Jamaica Labour Party have turned over to NSWA. 64 garbage truck and you have already heard the announcement how much garbage truck on the way another 50 truck that is 114 trucks versus them who don't do nothing the meeting comes as the jlp gets set for his annual conference on november 20. And still on the matter of garbage pileup, concerns this afternoon about the effects of poor garbage collection at some schools in St. Catherine. Chairman of the St. Catherine Public Health and Sanitation Committee, Sidney Rose, says he has received reports of students from at least three schools falling ill. It has garbage overflowing for weeks, for months. And I've also received report that a lot of the students are going down with certain illnesses where they would have been vomiting and they would have had loose tools and when they would have um, gone to the doctor to be treated it is said that it is because of the unsanitary spaces in which they in which they are Speaking at the latest meeting of the St. Catherine Public Health and Sanitation Committee in Spanish Town, Mr. Rose said enough attention is not being given to the St. Catherine Public Health Department. I complain about the fact that there are large numbers of students who are coming down with this bug. So I think we need to bolster the cadre of public health inspector to even treat with our schools. As it relates to garbage pileup, public health inspectors have um, received complaints of garbage pileup in schools. Um, so from time to time, we, we try to contact NSWME to have um, the matter sorted out in schools. 
um, regarding any reports of diarrhea, an increase in, in diarrhea among um, school children. Um, I personally have not gotten any report, but I could check with the surveillance team. Scores of commuters, including students, were displaced in several communities in St. James following a massive roadblock by residents of the East Central constituency this morning. The protesters are demanding improved road conditions. Details in this report. It has been weeks of protest action across varying sections of Ireland as Jamaicans demand improved road conditions. The latest action was carried out on Monday morning in East Central St. James, which is represented by Member of Parliament Edmund Bartlett. The frustrated residents downed trees and used other debris, including old refrigerators, to block the roads. It's understood that the blockage stretched from Friendship into the town of Montego Bay. Martin, a taxi operator who plies the route from Montego Bay to Johns Hall, says the stretch of road is in a deplorable condition. Now he says while one section of the roadway has been fixed, the area from Friendship to Spring Mount is costing taxi operators thousands of dollars in repairs due to the state of the road. Me on the other side, me could have gone on the road and, 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 and get and run, but me have to get involved because me go, me go to run by next time, me not get involved, me have to make a note of why. I've sent a message. In the meantime, he says the member of parliament has been missing in action. No, so we don't have MP. If we have MP, we wouldn't look for. He not even come and talk to us and say why we will go to Europe and so on and so on. He doesn't make me know, he doesn't talk to me. Head of operations in St. James, Aaron Samuels, told the Jamaica Cleaner that whilst he understood the plight of the residents with the condition of the roads, he is calling on them to be mindful of the impact it will have on fellow residents who need to go to school, work and to seek medical attention. He further noted that based on information received, there should be the signing of the documents for the repairs of the road soon. Machine Masters, TVJ News. And Member of Parliament for East Central St. James, Edmund Bartlett, has appealed for his constituents to end their protest. Mr. Bartlett says he has given a commitment to fix the roadway that is the subject of today's protest. I just want to say to everybody, yes, we are hearing you, we're listening, we're acting. We signed the contracts today and the road should start shortly. Mm -hmm. so, so you will tell them to, to desist? Yes, so that, you know, now that they know that it will be done for sure. At the highest level in the land, the Prime Minister and all of us were here signing. It is now that you should desist from continuing that disruptive activity. And so far as our school children who have to go to school and our nurses who have to go to the hospital and, you know, our um, commuters in general who have to go about their business, allow that free flow while we do the repair work to the road. More calls for improved safety infrastructure in schools. It comes after two students in separate incidents were injured due to deteriorating school structures. Sandy Williams has the details. Safety in school does not only relate to crime and violence, but the infrastructure as well. We have been doing ongoing maintenance in our schools getting the infrastructure for schools to a 21st century readiness state is a goal of the Ministry of Education and Youth. Again, creating proper workplaces for teachers and administrators is a priority. Education Minister Fable Williams made this pronouncement at the 58th Annual Conference of the Jamaica Teachers Association in August. Fast forward to nearly two months later, a sixth form student from the Decarterret College in Manchester was hospitalized after a wooden rail which she was leaning on collapsed. While in Kingston, a grade four student fell from the second floor of a building at the Windward Road Primary School. Registered architect Dr. Patricia Green has been taking note of the incidents. So we have two factors at play. One is the maintenance and a rigorous inspection of all infrastructure that has been locked up since COVID and now being reopened. And even significantly and more important, that existing schools be upgraded to meet safety factors 
and those that are currently being built should meet safety factors. She says several institutions have failed to observe the minimum requirement for railings in schools. So there is an ergonomical way in which you design things so your handrail is a certain distance generally and especially with schools it should be a little higher which is 36 in public spaces and in some situations it might even be 42. So you have those minimum heights to prevent persons from falling over the balustrade or the handrails and also the spacing of the bars in between so that the children cannot fall through the bars. It's why she's calling on the Ministry of Education to improve the infrastructural safety in schools. There is an architectural branch and they need to go through and prevent any further incident of this occurrence. And one of the ways in which it can be rectified is if you were to put some preferably heavy duty expanded metal and you begin to tack weld so that kids will not fall through the hand the rails. And it is so sad that our children are bearing the brunt for the negligence of our authorities in the safety standards that need to be exercised. The Ministry of Education and Youth has allocated $210 million for critical repairs to schools across the island. According to the Education Minister, each of the seven regions within the ministry has received $30 million for the infrastructural upgrades. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. For several months, the government has been trying to reach a new wage deal with public sector workers. But an agreement is still some way off, as several groups in the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, JCTU, are still rejecting aspects proposed in the Public Sector Compensation Review. President of the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, Helene Davis-White, says this review is a complete overall of public sector workers are to be compensated. One of the, the things, as O'Neill indicated, is that we have had to be um, trying to come up with um, a minimum standard, so to speak, as to how workers will um, benefit from, from this exercise. And when we are doing that, we are looking at net pay and not just at the gross pay. So it has been one where you have to do those kinds of calculations. Meanwhile, President of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, O'Neill Grant, says there are mounting questions about the alignment structure. For us in the, in the, in the core of civil service, we, we did have our challenges as well with how, um, for instance, um, persons in the middle bands are being treated, particularly those who are in receipt of, of certain non-taxable allowances. And the, the, the value of those non-taxable allowances in their overall compensation now vis-a-vis -vis what their total compensation will look like going forward. And so we had to make sure when we sat at the table that those workers that are in the middle that were being impacted negatively. Both Mrs. Davis-White and Mr. Grant were speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106 this morning. A St. Thomas family is desperately seeking assistance following a devastating fire at a sea Seaforth home on the weekend. Among their needs, school supplies for their children. Charred pages from a textbook tell only part of what transpired at this location in Seaforth St. Thomas Saturday afternoon. It's not clear what happened, but videos we received show the place 14 people called home in the community going up in flames. Our news team was told no one was at home when the fire began. The families are now distraught and seeking answers. May I tell you, said, ah, it's wicked right now. I don't know what I'm going through within the night, yeah. Because everything, everything, everything gone, gone, gone. Everything in the flames gone. For Marsha Davis, she's more concerned about her son's future. Uh, my son filing on everything, everything just gone. They are now pleading to the Member of Parliament, James Robertson, for assistance. Mr. James, we need you now more than ever. And you will get all our ex them. So we don't know what you are doing for we. Mr. James, Robertson. The Member of Parliament was here yesterday and he had promised that if they can sign the paper for the land, 
he will be seeking assistance through the social housing program in order to help the family. In the meantime, she's asking those who are able to assist the family with clothing, food supplies or furniture to do so. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minutes. In the world of business, $300 million has been invested in Jamaica by Chinese technology company Huawei. It has officially launched its new office space located at 97 Hope Road, Kingston 6. The complex has 9,000 square feet of space with digital low-carbon solutions and a modern work environment for staff. While speaking at the opening ceremony on Thursday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness welcomed the investment and commended the company for its contributions to the sector, which have aided in Jamaica's digital transformation thrust. In business internationally, Hong Kong stocks had their worst day since the 2008 global financial crisis, a day after Chinese leader Xi Jinping secured his iron grip on power at a major political gathering. Foreign investors, spooked by the outcome of the Communist Party's leadership reshuffle, dumped Chinese equities and won despite the release of stronger-than-expected GDP data. Hong Kong's benchmark Hang Seng Index plunged 6.4% on Monday, marking its biggest daily drop since November 2008. The index closed at its lowest level since April 2009. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. It's now time for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau has held a second round of talks with Caribbean community CARICOM leaders on the rapidly deteriorating humanitarian and security situation in Haiti. Now, it is said that Prime Minister Trudeau updated CARICOM leaders on Canada's assistance to Haiti and the assessment of the current situation. Trudeau highlighted recent support for Haiti, including joint airlift operations with the United States to deliver tactical and armored vehicles and supplies to the Haitian National Police to help restore security and stability. On the international scene, U.S. officials in Colorado say two people died and a toddler was rescued after their kayaks capsized in high winds and waves. It happened at Lake Pueblo State Park Sunday afternoon. Witnesses say a kayak with an adult and child capsized in heavy winds. Another two kayaks, each carrying an adult, also capsized as they tried to help them. State Park Rangers responded by boat and truck. A ranger jumped in the water, grabbed the child and started CPR until emergency medical crews got there. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Shane Masters. And that's the Midday News. I'm Kalisha Williams. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon. <laughs>